when you start out and you win a mission, the first thing you do is you set up all your requirements. So you have a lot of things that are in the scientist's head for what they want. You have the spacecraft, which is, say, around this size. It has to fit in this launch vehicle. So that's sort of what you start with. You start with this conceptual design of things. And then you have to take that and put it on pieces of paper. So then you have, a piece of, have paper which have drawings on them. You have um, you know, written down requirements on them and things like that. And then you go in the stage of actually building things. And so that's once you get past your preliminary design, then you build things. You build your instrumentation. You build your elect electrostatic analyzers. You build your electronics ports. And then you go through and you get to test everything. So you test your small little part here and your part here and your part here, and then you put them all together. And then you, um, you th put a beam on them, um, electrons, ions, um, and then you, you get to look at the data you get back, and hopefully it works. Um, and and it, it has. We've done, we've done really well with all the instrumentation on MMS. Um, and then once you do that, then you get to deliver it to the instrument suite, and then you hope that it talks uh, it fits on the instrument suite, and then it talks to all the, all the other instruments. And that's where we are right now. So it's really fun to see things that are written down on paper that you've seen in these um, in the, the little fold-up uh, fold things. That they're, they're, real, they're real items. They're you know, this big. They're, you can actually t put your hands on them and make sure that they work. Um, and so that's the way I think of it is you, know, you, you have this grand idea from the scientists, and then the engineers get to interface with everybody and try to build everything, put it together, make sure that it works. And so that's where we are right now. I also really enjoy the um, managing people as well as you know, making sure they're doing what they should be doing because you have to have both types. You can't just have everybody be in their office just working on the technical stuff. And engineering generally isn't just sitting in your office doing your design. You have to interface with other people as well. And so it's, it's not, I don't, I wouldn't say I just do management or just do technical, I do both. And that's to me what more systems engineering is. Um, because you have to see the big picture. I would do a lot of research because some people want to do a, on the electrical side. Some people are more interested in software. Some people are more interested in getting their hands dirty on the mechanical. So do research and see what's out there. Um, the one thing I always do um, did when I was growing up is I would always try to um, in, in the real world, where do I apply things? Um, whenever you're sitting on an airplane, look out at an airplane wing and look at all the moving parts and things that you're going through when you're landing, when you're taking off, what's moving, what, how does that work? And so think about how things work whenever you're in just the regular world because engineering is everywhere. And so it's just like science is everywhere, math is everywhere. When you're learning algebra, it is applicable <laughs> to other things. So it, just, just look at around the world and see where you can apply it.